Just for information, I just recorded like 10 minutes and the camera wasn't even on. Let's do this again then. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that quite a lot of people are asking me about and you know, it's kind of a big question in general and that is how do I become a nail tech and what do I have to think about when I'm choosing my school? So let's go! Okay, so just for information, this is actually going to be a talking video only. So if you're not into those kind of videos, I would recommend that you just click on to another fun video. And if you are not interested in hearing me blabbing about my background, you can also skip to the next part, which is going to be about choosing schools, etc. So here we go. First of all, I just want to go through a little bit about my background. So, I actually started out 11 years back. I did my education with a brand and it was, to be honest, a crappy education. I didn't really learn too much. They didn't, I think it was like one page talking about chemistry and one page about anatomy and I don't know, it was just like, I didn't even get to learn how to shape or file. I didn't know anything about like stress points or whatever. It was just like, it was so weird because that particular brand at that time, I don't know, you know, about that brand right now, but at that time, it was like, you should only wear this because if you use anything else, your nails are going to explode. Uh -oh. So, of course, I mean, their marketing thing was kind of like brainwashing your nail takes into thinking that this is the only thing you can use for your nails. And I believe it. I mean, I believe that for so long. It took me seven years to switch brand. It was a struggle because in my heart, it was like, no, I can't, I can't switch. I mean, I'm, the nails are going to explode. And I felt like that. So they really, I mean, they did it very successful, but as soon as you get out of that bubble, you're kind of like, hmm, yeah, no. And then you kind of lose respect for that brand. But anyway, I took my license. I worked at a salon for nine months. I eventually ran out of there and I promised myself never to work with women again. And then I rented a room at my... Well, granted, I got to borrow a room at my grandfather's apartment. So I did nails for a couple of years after that. But I mean, it was like more, more for extra income. And then my main income was actually from being a dancer and a choreographer. When I got into the nail industry, I was kind of disappointed because no one knew about nail art. No one wanted to know anything about nail art. At the salon, I had to do French and solid colors and if you got someone that was like total fashionista super hardcore nail addict you could maybe put a Swarovski on pinky so that was how much fun I had when I started out thank you and I actually attended a couple of nail art classes the few that I could get my hands on and you know even at the classes people were like you know, people attending the classes, they were like looking at it like... Mm, oh my god, oh that's so ugly, I want to do that. Oh my god, I would never do that on a client that is so ugly. They weren't ready for nail art. I mean, it was 11 years back. So, I mean, I don't blame them. But... I didn't want to stay in the nail industry, so... I just kept it on the side to get a little bit of money, and then started to work on my dance career. I was working as a professional dancer up until like I was 27 or something. And the thing is that I've been actually doing gymnastics since I was nine. And then I had an injury when I was 15 and I had to do surgery on my, my knee. And I mean, that kind of injury, it follows you for the rest of your life. So I were I was in a lot of pain not only for my knee but you know my entire body. I've been working out like hardcore since I was nine. 
my body was kind of falling apart and I felt like I was kind of fed up with the industry overall, the dance industry. When you look at the outside, it's all happy, happy. The people are so beautiful and they have such a fun time and they're just standing on stage and doing this and the blah. As with every industry, there's a backside to it. And in Sweden, the thing is that if you want to get jobs or gigs, you need to know the right kind of people. And if you're not like buddy buddy, heavy coffee blah, 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 with these kind of people, you're not getting a job. So even if I was like, I was attending the few auditions I could get, uh, because people don't really do auditions in, uh, in Sweden, they just pick their best friends to do the gigs. So when I was attending the auditions, I was always getting to the last section of the audition, but then when you saw the people around you, it was like, yeah, I can already tell like you and you and you and you, you are gonna get the job because you're like buddy buddy with the people that are holding the audition. I kind of created my own opportunities and jobs, so I I was lucky enough to actually have a dance career without being um, too dependent on people around me. But then I felt like, yeah, I'm so fed up with this. I'm fed up with the people, I'm fed up with the industry, I'm fed up with, you know, everything. It was just like, yeah, I'm done with it, thank you very much. I've learned so much, but now it's time for me to leave. I thought like, well, I gotta need my, I gotta need, get money from somewhere. And so my dad was like, well, why don't you get back to nails? And I was like, yeah, I wanna do it so boring. But I got a job at a hair salon and I started out again. And it was like, what just happened? The whole industry had just changed from here to here. I mean, people were suddenly into nail art. They wanted to do uh, decorations, they wanted glitter, they wanted stones, they wanted hand painting stuff, they wanted everything. And it was just like in the beginning of exploding in Sweden and I was like, hell yeah. So I got back into it and like six months later I got a call from uh, different uh, record labels with artists. So I got to do Kesha's nails a couple of times and then, you know, I got phone calls with like, Leona Lewis and uh, Iggy Azalea, Nicki Minaj. So things really took off for me from there. And I really think that a lot of it has to do with my, my dance background. Because when you're a dancer, you're promoting yourself as a person. As I mean, I'm promoting my body. This is what I will show you on stage. So... I had that already. I knew how to promote myself because you're fighting your ass off to promote yourself as a dancer. So I kind of took that with me into the nail industry. So in Sweden, and I think that, well, in general, of course, but I mean, especially in Sweden, you're not allowed to be, well, kind of, you know, promoting yourself. It's ugly to promote yourself. And I was kind of like, well, f that. I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to succeed. So my my little, you know, advice on the way, screw people, just do whatever you want. So now we reached the part where I'll tell you a couple of tips on what to think about when choosing your nail school and becoming a nail tech. All right, so that is kind of my background. Uh, after that, I switched a couple of salons and now I'm at the salon where I am right now. And I love it. It's the most beautiful and perfect salon in the entire world. And it's called Linda Vista. You should check it out. I can put the link down below if you want to. So come and visit me sometime if you are passing by Stockholm. I would love that. Let's get into uh, choosing uh, schools. First of all, we need to talk about that things look very different from country to country. So. For example, in Sweden, you go to a specific brand, like for example, Light Elegance, you say, hello, I want to be an Altec, please educate me. And then you take uh, the entire class for like, it's like classes for, I don't know, six months, I don't, uh, one year, I don't know, it, de it depends. And then when you're done, you get your license and it's like, yeah, I, I'm a Light Elegance nail tech, but you can also do other brands. So if you're not happy with the like elegance products, you can go to whatever and say like, hey, I want to try your products. Can you show me how to do it? And then you do like a come on over, and then they do like a really quick, 
course on their products like not on uh, anatomy or chemistry or it's just like these are our products this is how you use it some brands have it some brands don't they just send uh, stuff out and they don't really care but i mean it's up to everyone and when it comes to like for example the states you have more like a beauty school and then you have like a hairstylist and you have makeup artists and you know everything so it's not a specific brand it's a beauty school so you take your license as a beauty uh, like a, as a nail tech and then you go to specific brands to say hey you know what I want to try out your products how can we arrange that so then you start to work with different brands so this is like very different from country to country so I'm just gonna do like a general what I think from my perspective you know being educated in Sweden and then you just have to translate it to whatever country you're from as an example in Sweden we have an organization called Sansa so if you're in Sweden you can just go into sansa.se I'll put the link below and there you'll actually have a list of all uh, the approved educations and which brands so that is pretty cool then you know that they are up to a certain standard however even if they're up to a certain standard there's some other things that you need to consider it so you reach the point where you found a couple of schools that you feel like well I think that I like these so what do I do now? My best advice to you is actually to go to each school, visit them, look at the products, uh, and especially talk to the educators. You know, get a feeling if you click with them or not, because a lot actually have to do with personal chemistry. Make sure that you talk to a lot of people and also talk to people that maybe took the education, you know, your back or something just to make sure that yeah what what did you think how was it blah 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 blah. so talk to a lot of people around you talk to the educators and talk to former students and of course if you can get your hands on uh, students students that are in the process of becoming nail techs from that specific education that is also very good of course also it's very important to know what do you want from your brand or school I mean for me I think it's very important that they have a really great customer service they I, I get an impression of that they are very professional I get an impression that they're very professional and that they do care about every single client slash nail tech that they produce also for me it was very important to work with a brand that i felt was always developing i mean coming up with new colors new products and also a brand that you actually can work with and that action actually affect in some way like if i want something specific produced i could actually get in touch with the people making uh, the gels and they could take that in you know consideration at least so that was very important for me you know some brands if we're talking about brands are more like uh, nail art into nail art and some brands are more like into technique and, and um, competition nails and things like that now, more French and more nail art so you really had to decide like what is my preference what am I more or less drawn to and I mean you can always switch it's not like you're choosing a brand for life you can always switch but when you're in a brand try to keep to one brand and I'm actually going to talk about that in another video but trust me it's important to stick with one brand uh, when it comes to chemistry so uh, it has nothing to do with sales point or whatever chemistry very important try to stick with one brand also it's very important to decide do you want to work with gel do you want to want to work with acrylic do you want to work with gel polish does this school teach in every technique or just a couple so that is also a very important aspect one other tip is actually to see if the schools are having their like final exams or something like that at their school and then you can come in and 
sit and, and model for those uh, students that are taking their license. In that way, you get a better feeling of the atmosphere in the classroom, get a better impression of the teachers. So uh, try to be a model at that school you're interested in. Now we've reached a question about money. First of all, if something is really cheap, that's probably not a good thing. All right, so just keep that in mind. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, enough about that. An education can vary from brand to brand and of course, country to country. So just look around, try to compare different brands and different schools. Also, be very aware of what is included in each education. So, I mean, if something looks really good and they're really cheap and it looks like you get a lot of stuff, but really go into like, well, are they teaching this? Are they doing that? Blah, blah, blah. And then you go to the next brand and they're like, well, we have all that. But yeah, it's a little bit more expensive because you have more hours with your teacher. So also, how many hours do I get with my teacher? And how many hours are actually just time when they kind of included like, well, you're sitting on your own doing this. So teacher time, very important. Also one thing that uh, I think a lot of people forget is that the jars of gel, for example, or acrylics, they differ in sizes. And you really need to look into the price when it comes to uh, milligrams, milliliters, or whatever measurements you have in your country because it's easy to get fooled by the sizes of the containers. So try to cal calculate how much do one ounce or one millimeter or one gram actually cost and then you add it. So be aware of that. Also make sure to find out what else is included in the price. Like, how many products do I get? So also make sure that you ask yourself how much product is included in the price. You can also look into um, how the education is scheduled and what you prefer to do. Like for myself, I when I did my education, it was maybe like one week in school and then a couple of days on my own doing nails and then I did like three days in school and then I did a couple of days on my own, two days in school, a couple of days on my own and then one day and then we have like three months to do a certain amount of sets and then we came back, did another week and you know, so on. Some schools do everything at once. They have like five weeks in classroom and then you go out and you do nails and then you come back and do your license. So it all, I mean, it's all about preference. Uh, but just look into that and see like what you would prefer. Also, another thing to think about is that, you know, the market when it comes to nail techs. Try to look into your local market. Is there a lot of nail techs in your area? Uh, is this really a good decision right now? Should I wait? Do I have a lot of people that, you know, are, are the salons overflowing? Is there actually a possibility to get a clientele from my area? I mean, those are also important things to think about. Uh, but when it comes to myself, I can only speak for myself, of course. Uh, and I never let things like that put me down. If I want to do something, I make it happen. So if you're a little bit more laid back, you should probably think about it because being self-employed, if you want to do that, is so much work. It takes so much time. So maybe that's also a thing that you need to think about. Do you want to be self-employed? Do I want to boot rent or whatever? And then uh, last thing that I would like to address that people are asking me about is that, you know, why did you switch from this brand to like Elegance? And for me, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of research and I found myself choosing between two brands and it was like Elegance and another one. And for me, it was a lot about that I like that Light Elegance is always improving, they're developing, they're coming up with new products and you know everything that I already talked about. 
Also, I really like the company and the feeling. I got good chemistry with the distributors and things like that. So that switched me over and you know, it, that made me decide to switch to Light Elegance. So it's all about preference, but it's important to do a lot of research. It is, because it's a lot of money that you are giving to someone. I mean, that money should give you a lot back. It really is an investment in your future and yourself. So it's important that you know that your money is going to give you that investment. Well, to, to give you the money's worth, basically. Hopefully uh, that answered a lot of your questions. If you're thinking about getting into the nail industry, I wish you the best of luck. It really is a fun industry. However, you do need to work very hard, so be prepared for that. But, I mean, I don't want to scare you off or anything. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, like working with your hobby every day. If you have further questions or comments, I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. Also, if you have a specific like question about uh, a nail school or something like that, post in the comments and hopefully someone will see it that actually did that education and they maybe can help you out. So, shout away. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.